Hey guys, it's Prince Rich with Rich Technology Group, and in today's video, we are going to talk about how to fix voice over IP phone system call quality issues. For those of you out there who have already got an existing voice over IP phone system and are watching this video and are having some problems, I'm going to talk to you about some of the common issues and how you can very easily fix them, in most cases for free. For those of you who are watching who are debating a uh, voice over IP or cloud uh, based phone system for your business, this will at least give you an idea of some of the common issues that you may hear that people have. Um, I'm going to go over them in detail and you may be surprised how easy most of them are to avoid or fix. So let's get started. Overview of list of the common issues that you would typically see with the voice over IP phone system if there's a problem on the network or a problem in the ranks would be call breakup, dropped calls, failed transfers and system going offline periodically. Like you may see your phone actually go from the online uh, cloud status to the offline status as if it's lost internet or something like that. Um, back to the first one about call breakup. A lot of carriers will call that static um, where, you know, it sounds like, you know, bad cell phone reception type thing almost. Um, we're going to cover these. The fixes that I'm going to go over would fix most of these because they all stem or are related from all of these problems usually are related to the same, uh, the same cause of the problem. So one point I want to throw out there before we go any further is, and I'm just going to tell you guys, as much as you may not believe this or as much as a friend of a friend may have told you otherwise, I've worked with all the carriers. I've seen all the different types of problems with voice over IP systems that you can think of out there. So I can tell you with the utmost assurance, 99.5% of the time, the issue is not your service provider. It's not your carrier. It's not an issue that they're having. It's your network. It's something with your router or your switch or your network that is causing the uh, communications or the internet protocol in your service to fail or to run into issues resulting in things such as like we mentioned drop calls failed transfer static and so on and so forth so <clears throat> things to troubleshoot to get at these first and foremost i recommend that all of you whoever your service provider is you contact your service provider before you dig in and you start making things worse or you get so ahead of the game troubleshooting that you, you know, you change so many things, the problem still persists and you can't get back to where you were before. Before you do anything or call in any outside help like your IT provider or a friend of a friend, call the service provider. What you need to do is, for those of you who have a voice over IP uh, a hosted platform, which means your carrier is probably Vonage Business or Ring Central or 8x8 or Jive Communications or Nextiva or one of those out there, all of you, if you're using a third party hosted platform, you have some sort of a portal. Um, you have a login to some sort of an administrative portal. In that portal, you would be able to go in and see an actual log, kind of like a call report of all calls that, uh, that you dialed out on and that came in. What I want you to do is, is think back to, or if you're somebody who's experiencing the problems now, what I want you to do is write down the exact or the approximate time and the date when the problem occurred. What you're going to do is you're going to contact your service provider. You're going to tell them that you had, uh, for example, you're going to say that you had a bunch of drop calls. Um, then you're going to tell them it happened on this date and it happened at approximately this time. They will be able to go into their system and look into the call logs and on their end, you won't be able to see this, but on their end, on the administrative side, on the service provider side, they can see things uh, like error codes, uh, numeric and alphabetic error codes and so on and so forth that tell them what may have caused it. They can quite literally tell you if it was an, a fault with the phone that you have. Um, they can see if your internet was down and even though it was no fault of their systems, they could see, well, our system couldn't contact your internet, which means either your internet was down or you had an issue with your router or firewall or switch on site that was causing a break between the internet and your phone system in the cloud. So step number one is you need to contact them because they can help you troubleshoot that further. You're already paying for it. You're paying for their support. You're paying for their assistance. So you, before you go any further and especially pay a third party like your IT provider or whatever, call your service provider and give them as specific as possible 
dates and times of when this actually happened. Number two, I want you to check your router model. What router do you have? Is it like a Linksys model number XYZ this that? Is it a Cisco this this that? Is it a Mediacom this this that? Is it a Netgear such and such? What you want to do is, and um, you can usually find this online, but I recommend for those of you who don't have a lot of time or don't know how to search for this online, contact your service provider, ask them is your router on their trusted device list. Basically, most of the service providers have a list that's online or a list that they have, you know, in their troubleshooting headquarters or whatever that has a pretty in-depth list of recommended routers that they recommend will work with their service without any issues. And then they have a list of what we call the do not use list. It's called the non-trusted list of routers that they already know if you own, you're going to have problems. Typically, they've researched it to the point where in their own uh, technical laboratories to where they can quite literally tell you exactly the problems that you'd be having with specific routers that they do not recommend or that are not on their trusted list, as they typically call it. So uh, number two would be contact your provider, find out if your router is on their trusted or not trusted list. If it's on their not trusted list, then you know right there, right then and there, the router is the problem, which is basically the bottleneck of your network, your infrastructure. Um, ask them what are some router, you need to tell them how many phones you have and approximately how big your network is, how many computers you have also, because they need to know your general network load. That way, if they know, okay, this is somebody who's got, say, 20 phones and uh, 20 computers and then somewhere around like 10 users that are using cell phones on Wi-Fi, they know that you've got approximately 50 devices that are using, uh, that are, that are pushing traffic through your network and through your router. So you obviously need a trusted router that's on their list that is also capable of handling the traffic for approximately 50 devices. That's very important. So make sure that the router that you, uh, that make sure when you talk to them and ask them to suggest a trusted router, that will work with their service, you tell them how many devices you have on the network that are sucking up internet so that they know, okay, we need to get this per this company a trusted router, but it has to be rated to handle this many devices. Because if you, let's say uh, you've got 40 devices on your network and then you have them say, oh yeah, Netgear XYZ will work just fine for you. And it is a router that will work just fine for your voice over IP system and cause all the issues you may, uh, and, and fix all the issues you may have been having you've got another problem then to deal with because then you've got a router that doesn't serve, uh, that's inadequate as far as serving the network load and the internet load that you have uh, uh, in your business. So that's a really important one. Um, have your provider, this is number three, have your service provider check your router configuration. Um, we work with all the carriers, but this is one that Vonage um, and Nextiva are actually very good at working with and I've worked directly with them for customers that have had problems in the past. You're already paying for the service, so you're already paying for technical support, for in-depth technical support and problem resolution. You are already paying for these guys to remote log in securely into a computer that you have in your office and log into your router and check over all of your settings in your router and make sure all of the settings in there are the way they're supposed to be or what they call their recommended router or recommended network configuration settings to ensure proper call quality with the carrier that you're using. You're already paying for this. So pick the phone up, call them up and say, hey, this is such and such business with Vonage or Nextiva account number, this and that. I'd like for one of your high level technicians to log into my router and just double check and make sure that my router settings are the way that you guys recommend. A lot of times what you're gonna find that they do is firewall, is typically your firewall in your router is typically your big culprit that breaks traffic going in and out for inbound and outbound uh, conversations with your system. So typically what your provider is going to do, the first place they're going to go after they check a, other, uh, a few other settings that are typical like cutting off SIP ALG and some other things, they're going to go into your firewall and they're going to try to put your phones because your phones have their own IP addresses. They're going to try to create a firewall table or a rule as they call it, with those phones in there that tells your router, hey, these phones are trusted, 
let traffic for these phones pass through the firewall in and out unimpeded and give it priority on the network uh, over other things. So, number four, check your wires. That's a really, really big one. Your wire, your wiring in your office, if you've got, if you're in a really old building, it's got like some 15 year old wiring, or you're in a new or, an, or a you know, middle aged building that the people that were there before you didn't quite take care of the wiring in the wall and it's been used and abused, you need to get an IT technician, your IT provider, or somebody in your area that's a cabling company or something like that that works with Cat5 Ethernet or Cat6. You need to get them to come to your office with a little tester. Um, there's different ones. There's inexpensive testers. And then there's one called the Real World Certifier, which a lot of more reputable uh, wiring or networking uh, companies have. You need to get somebody out there, it doesn't cost that much, to test every single one of those jacks on the wall that you have the phones plug into that go back to your network and make sure that there's no issues on the wire. If there's an issue on the wire, trust me, if they've got the right equipment, which most of them do and it's not that expensive, they will find it. Simply rerunning a wire or re-terminating the end of a wire that may have been damaged from moisture or from wear and tear can fix some fairly serious issues uh, that you may be having with phones. Um, I want to throw something out there while we're on the subject of wiring. If you're having an issue with, say, all the phones in your office, that typically stems to an issue that's something more centralized, like your router or your switch, something that's more in the bottleneck arena where all your traffic's going through. If you're having an issue that is specific to, let's say you have 10 phones, but the only person that's having an issue is Bobby, who's in the back office, it's probably either an issue with Bobby's phone or Bobby's wire that's in the wall that is connecting his phone if none of the other phones are having issues. So that's fairly self-explanatory, but I just want to throw that out there. If all the phones are having a problem, it's typically caused by something more centralized, like a router or a switch, which is managing all the traffic. If it's specific to one or two people out of a large bunch, that means that there's probably something going on with their individual equipment or the wire that is communicating back and forth between that person's phone and office and the, and the internet and modem that you have in, the, uh, in your wiring closet or whatever it may be. Um, point number five, and this is the final point, is your internet. If you have really crappy internet, say you have some really bad like wireless internet or you're running DSL um, or something like that, or you just have broadband, you have high speed internet, but you don't have a lot of speed and you've got a lot of phones, that's probably your culprit right then and there. Plainly put, you need to have enough broadband to be able to support or enough internet bandwidth to, to be able to support the number of phones that you have. The typical rule of thumb is 200 kilobits per phone is how much you need. So if you've got 10 phones, you need to times 200 kilobits, uh, kilobytes times basically however many phones you have. 1,024 kilobytes is one megabyte. So do the math. It's usually somewhere in the ballpark of the providers recommend 200 kilobytes per phone up and down. Um, if you're falling way below that, then your internet is probably lacking and you need to contact somebody like us to see what internet services are available in your area that are better and faster and have better bandwidth than what you currently have. So in closing, I just want to throw out there again, 99.9, uh, 99.5% of the time in my dealings nationwide with many, many carriers, the issue is always you. It's always something on your network, router, switch, bad configuration, somebody on the network that's hogging up all of the bandwidth and so the phones are starving for uh, enough bandwidth to be able to make calls or, or, uh, or, or have enough uh, bandwidth to, to ensure quality of service. Uh, it's usually something on your network. If you're not sure, call your service provider. You're already paying them a monthly service for the service. You're also paying for their technical support and for them to help you find out the problem. One last thing that I want to mention is this. A lot of people tend to get really, really upset with their provider and, oh, this, this provider's crap and, oh, their quality of service was this and I canceled. Don't do that. They want to keep your business. They don't want you to cancel. They make money from you using their service long term. So it is in their best interest for them to work with you 
so that the two of you can find out what is causing the problem and get it resolved. They don't want you to have issues and try, and try to look for ways to cancel your contract or cancel your service. They want you to have good quality of service. So call your service provider and go from there. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. For those of you who are watching that experienced some fairly serious or pretty serious problems with your voiceover IP phone system and you resolve them, let us know in the comments below how you fixed it. I'd love to hear some of the problems that people have experienced and how they fixed them. Again, this is Prince Rich with Rich Technology Group. Thanks again for watching, and I'll chat with you guys again soon.